everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Dr. Mommy Budget and I am Amanda. Today we are going to do yet another cozy chair conversation. This is a day seven of the 12 days of Christmas. So for those that are new to my channel, welcome. And for those that are not new, welcome back. Here on this channel, I talk about anything related to finances and perhaps maybe once or twice a week whenever I have time I may talk about a topic that is not related to finances as you can see in the description below we are going to be talking about open-mindedness open-mindedness and more specifically as it relates to your finances okay so we're gonna grab some coffee because it is still early and it's cold outside as well but we are going to dive into this topic I have a few notes written down here so basically open-mindedness in general is what we're going to discuss but more specifically to your finances all right point number one that i would like to make is there is no one way to think about a situation or your money and your finances there is no one way remember we are going to be talking about open mindedness okay so when you are dealing with an open-minded situation or you are operating from an open-minded perspective that means that nine times out of ten or a lot of times you are operating in a space that is anti your way of thinking so in other words you are open to hear other suggestions other ways of individuals may want to do things okay you are open to participating in other situations activities events that you may not necessarily think of as your for first choice of um, activity or course of action or whatever it may be Okay, so that is what I'm saying when I'm saying there is no one way to think about a situation or your finances. Now, let's hone this in, zero in more specifically on finances. Okay, so when you are actually creating your budget, managing your money, saving for an activity, purchasing items, paying down your debt, investing, you have to make sure this is a strategy that will benefit you and your household first and foremost then secondly this is where the open-mindedness come into play be willing to listen and or try yes try do implement put some action behind others suggestions a lot of people that are subscribed to this channel subscribe to other financial channels as well therefore that means that you are pretty much open-minded as it relates to finances because you're listening to the way that i budget weekly do my budget recaps or my budget projections or the way i invest or create my sinking funds or whatever i'm doing and you're also listening to others and you may every now and again implement some of these strategies into your personal finance or your personal life so that is where the open-mindedness come in a lot of people i'm not going to say a lot but there are people that are not willing to be open-minded when it comes to their finances or even their their life in general it is basically my way or the highway nope i'm going to do it like this this is what works for me Okay, so that is a number one. There is no one way or point number one. There's no one, one way to do your finances. However, you want to be open-minded because a lot of times some of those strategies that you may deem not usable to you may implement or impact your finances in a major way. 
Second point, closed-mindedness, which is kind of piggybacking off of what I just said, closed-mindedness closes off valuable opportunities. Open-mindedness does the opposite. Pretty much what I just said. Closed-mindedness will close off valuable opportunities. Open-mindedness will do the opposite. For example, I can use myself for an example, right? Sure. Let's do this. There have been times when I have not wanted to, I guess, attend an event. I don't know what it is sometime about attending events and interacting and being sociable with people. Sometimes it's like, I just don't want to do it. However, when I get there, here we go. We are activating that open-minded process. I am getting out of my closed-minded way of thinking, which is, I do not want to go. I don't want to deal with people. That's closed-mindedness. Open-mindedness is attending the event, sitting there at the table, having food and drinks with the individuals, talking. The value comes in for me is when I am there at the event or at that activity and I am getting value from that event by either acquiring knowledge or, you know, it may even be um, implementing or benefiting me from a mental standpoint. So there's laughter. You know, you're talking about funny things. If you're at more of a serious seminar type event, you're learning information. So this is where the value comes into place, okay, or into play. So yes, sometimes you have to force yourself, which takes me directly into my third point. Force yourself to put down your way of thinking as it relates to disliking how someone else operates their life or their finance or whatever. Okay, the third point. Open-mindedness forces you to put down your way of thinking as it relates to disliking how someone else operates their life, their finances, or whatever that is that, you know, um, the topic that's being discussed. Let's just think about that, you know, as we go forward in life and, you know, we get older and some things are just not as important as they used to be because you are finding more value in your life and getting rid of a lot of the mundane type stuff, the routine type stuff, and you want to do, to do more things that are more valuable. Let's think about being open-minded. And yes, open-minded is going to take you out of your comfort zone sometimes. You're going to hear things that you are not um, a fan of, that you don't agree with, okay? Just be open-minded. Try it. You know, of course you don't want to put yourself in danger or no other individual in danger or your situation in danger. For example, your finances. If you have someone on YouTube or you go to some seminar and someone is telling you, hey, you need to invest $5,000 into this um, whatever it is that, that maybe let's just say a course or maybe um, a, a stock or some sort of investment and you're gonna get, you know, 20 times the return on your money in 30 days. And all you have in your account or your multiple accounts is $5,000. No, you know, you don't do that. So that, you also need to use your better judgment as well and um, <laughs> your intuition when it, when it comes to being open-minded. But if it's, you know, something that's not going to affect you from a major standpoint, why not try it? A lot of times that you will get value from those situations. This is really all I wanted to stress on day seven of the 12 days of Christmas. Try to be open-mindedness. 
Really, seriously, try it. Don't just come here and listen to this video and then hit the like button and move on to the next video. Implement some of these strategies. You may need to make small steps in your life to do it, but start to implement this stuff. A lot of these points and pointers that I am trying to make are things that I have experienced and I have actually received value from them. Okay? So this is all I have for this video. Leave me a comment below and let me know of a situation where you were once closed-minded and you became open-minded and decided to try that activity, that event, read that book, do that active activity, whatever it was, and you received value from it. Let me know in the comments below. below. This is all I have. This is Dr. Mommy Budgets, where we dream big but start small around here. I will see you in the next video. Peace.